I just want to say before we start, I really meant it when I said First Impressions was meant for more than just bad games I didn't see much point in finishing. I say that because I sincerely am hoping that starts to actually become true. Unfortunately, that's not the case today. This is White Knight. White Knight is a very tragic game. It is absolutely gorgeous and dripping with unique air all of its own. It could be Alan Wake as a noir game. It could be Resident Evil by way of amnesia. Instead, it's just an adventure game that thinks the best part about old adventure games was tedious, drawn-out puzzles. The game does make some vague gestures towards genuine survival horror, but other than keeping track of your matches and fighting stiff controls, you could be fooled into thinking this is some renovated Telltale game. Except in a Telltale game, there's a charm to the story and the sequences are clear and understandable. White Knight, on the other hand, thinks that the second best thing from old school adventure games was being as vague as possible and making players beat their heads against a wall. You will end up running around in circles, using a limited resource that will make you have to reload a save if you use up all your matches. Because that's fun, right? It's fun having a limited resource that you will force you to have to give up progress. I understand this is an indie game built around old school ideas. And I understand that they didn't have the quality assurance bigger projects would get, but did seriously anyone other than the developers play this before release? I mean anybody. Did anybody. Their spouses. A cat. Cause Anyone who could point out that Laser Shoot Larry would bulk at some of these puzzles, even the very opening one. Let me walk you through it. You're in a brief car accident, and afterwards, you arrive at an old mansion. No one seems to be home, and the door is locked. You wander around the front yard, interacting with everything in sight, and 99% of it is flavor exposition or pointless red herrings. The actual location to find the key is in the graveyard, but it's not as simple as picking it up. No, even though the protagonist himself will admit he sees a glint of something on a tombstone, he refuses to grab at it for some reason. Instead, you have to make sure that it can be clearly seen in view, so you have to interact with a giant statue, but only at one particular angle. Otherwise, you might just get more flavor text exposition. Then when the key is fully revealed, you can finally pick it up. This is the simplest puzzle in the game, and it only gets worse from here. Once you are in the house and start exploring, you do all manner of strange things, with the game struggling to make any amount of realistic logic. There are leaps and bounds that will send you immediately looking for a walkthrough, and I don't even blame you for that. That was actually the linchpin moment for me, when I realized the only way I'd stay sane would be using a walkthrough. In an adventure game, needing a walkthrough is usually seen as cheating. That's not what you should have to resort to. And you might be thinking, oh, he just gave up too quickly. No. I want it to love White Knight. It looked like it was going to be this really great adventure game, but it's not. I played older adventure games, it's not that I'm unfamiliar with just how crazy things could get, but there comes a point in your life when you realize, you know, I could play the game where I have to double touch a gramophone, hit a light switch to kill a ghost, grab a key, go to a different room, sift through some stuff, grab another key, go in here, open a thing, have to navigate past a crappily programmed AI ghost, and you just stop and you realize, you know, there are better things I could be doing with my time than this, and I should not have to use a Let's Play to get through. The moment you hit that, unless it's like Starship Titanic, in which case you pretty much have every excuse to, but oh my gosh, unless you can tolerate the bad puzzle design, there's no point with this one. I generally try to actually not go this far off the cuff, regardless of the whole unabridged thing, but oh my goodness. The story itself isn't even that great. I looked up the ending and it's one of those cliche twists that you've seen a thousand times, but you think, oh well they won't do that here, but they do. Really. This is just a game that is gorgeous, but does not have some very good brains with it. Even the animation work for an indie project, this game is good looking. Now if only someone with good game design had come in here. And I'm not trying to insult the developers, because I do know that there's a niche that wants this sort of game. There's a niche that wants for these kinds of puzzles. But that's a small niche. There's a reason this type of adventure game isn't the big popular one now. There's a reason Mobius, Cognition, Telltale, the remastered Gabriel Knight games, there's a reason those are popular. 
There's a very good reason those are popular. They learned. They evolved. They upgraded. White Knight tries to be a homage to classic games, but it hits all the wrong notes. Instead of that slow burn, you get harassed by enemies within the first hour of playing. You get bad puzzle design instead of intuitive logic. It's a game that's confused and lost in the dark. White Knight could have been so much more, but as it is, the appeal it holds is very niche. Anyone other than the most hardcore vanguard of old school adventure games should approach this one with caution. It is not worth your time. Silent Hill Stanley Kubrick Stephen King 2001, A Space Odyssey, System Shock, Dead Space, Alien. These and other inspirations come together today to bring you the game I am recommending. You should be keeping a close eye on this one. This is Spirits of Xanadu.